Hi, Joe. Welcome in this episode of Facts and Rumors of Knives from Europe. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? It's good to see you again. It's been a little while. It's been a couple, yes. couple of years now. I think it's two years. Bladestock was the last time. Bladestock 2019. So one year. 2000, yeah, one year. Yeah. yeah. 2019. Yeah, I was looking forward to coming again this year, but unfortunately, you know, stuff is yes. out of our control and everything got, got shut down. <laughs> exactly, out of control. Joe, yeah, I know you as a, as a knife collector with a lot of passion. Uh, besides collecting knives, you also manage a well-watched YouTube uh, video channel uh, under the name Messer HQ. Where did the passion for knives came from? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's an interesting question, and I, I don't really have a, a great answer. All I can say is, I mean, I, I've just carried knives ever since I can remember. Um, I remember just as a little kid going to the flea market every weekend because there was a guy there that would sell me knives, you know, regardless of the fact that I was only 10 or 11 years old. Um, I was really into bala songs as I was a kid, and I, I was always flipping, and, you know, I just grew up on in an area where we, we had a lot of land and we had a lot of yard work to do. And we just, myself, my siblings, we, we just always had knives on us for, for just working. Um, I moved to Germany in 2010 and I left all my knives in, in the US. I can't say that I had any great ones. I think I had a couple buck knives or, or something, but most of, the, most of my knives at that point were, were all pretty cheap. And it wasn't until I got to Germany when I decided I wanted to buy a knife here. And I think I got a Spyderco Endura and Man, I just thought that knife was just incredible. I couldn't believe that I spent $65 on a knife. I mean, at the time, that was it just blew my mind that I, yeah. I spent so much money, you know, on a knife. And of course, I would watch other YouTube rev reviews on this Spyderco Endura, and I just wanted to, you know, hear from other people that they love this knife as much as I do. Um, and of course, that led to watching other videos and getting interested in other knives. And I mean, you know, it's a slippery slope. You know, once you start getting into the hobby, uh, you, I mean, you, you just yeah, have, have this massive of knives. And recently, you know, I'd say in the past five years, I've gotten really into um, traditional pocket knives, you know, old vintage Swiss Army knives. I think that um, kind of started it. The flea market by my house is just a gold mine for old traditional pocket knives. And I really love buying these, these junkers, you know, just for a couple bucks and coming home and getting the sandpaper out and, you know, making them shine again. And, and I guess that just kind of led into, you know, the, the collection as it stands right now, you know, and I started yeah. the YouTube channel and I've been doing it, I don't know, I think for almost five years now. And for me, it's, it's more of a hobby. Um, a lot of people do YouTube every single day. You know, I try to upload once a week, but for me, YouTube's really been great. Just, I, I just meet people all around the world. I mean, yeah. because of my YouTube channel, I have friends, literally all around the world yeah um and it, it's just really amazing to me i never thought it, uh, it would lead me to this to this point but i'm really happy it, it has yeah yeah yes and, and it's it's funny because youtube doesn't have borders nope. so you are a guy from the united states but you're living yep. in germany and no yep. one cares no one notices even right no, notice it why did, why did you move to, the, to, to Germany? Well, I took a job as a lacrosse coach. Um, I played lacrosse my, my entire life. Uh, I played in college. I graduated in 2008, and that was right in the middle of the big recession in the U.S. So, of course, here I am, this fresh graduate that wasn't yeah. able to get a job. So, yeah, I, I just didn't have work. And I had a friend that was over here coaching the Munich women's team, and I was talking to her on Skype one time, and she said, how would you like to come over to Germany? You know, the Munich team really needs a coach. And I just didn't have any, anything better at the time. And, you know, it sounded really exciting. Before this, I had never left the United States. Okay. So it, it was really a, a big jump for me to jump on a plane and just, just come yeah. to Munich. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was a great time. We won the, the German national championship my very first year as a coach. And, you know, and then they, they of course, invited me back uh, for another season. And in the meantime, I met my wife, who, who's a German woman and yeah she she kind of messed up the exit strategy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, you, if yeah. you will because i had always planned on just uh coming over for a season or two then returning to, to yeah. the united states uh, it was yeah. just supposed to be an excursion but yeah it's just funny how life life turns out you know yeah. I, I met my wife here and now my, my life is, is in yeah very interesting 
and you you already mentioned you, you think you are doing your YouTube channel for five years and and in the meantime you you reached over four thousand followers so that's quite a number for a, for a knife related uh, YouTube channel so what is your secret <laughs> Oh, I don't know if there, there's a secret. I can say for those, those five years, the first three years, I never really took YouTube seriously. I, I would make a video, you know, once every couple months, sometimes not for six months. And my numbers were, my, my subscription numbers were always pretty low. Um, I mean, I, I had 50 subscribers. You know, I can remember getting excited when I had 10 people watch a video and the, and the first time someone left me a comment oh my god I was I was through the roof um, it was it wasn't until like the really the past couple years when I started getting more focused on it and really trying mm -hmm. to be disciplined and making at least one video per week because I mean you've made YouTube videos and I'm sure you know this you know there's this algorithm with, with YouTube and if you're not making content regularly your videos don't show up in, in search results and you never get discovered so I, I guess not a secret, but advice to people that are interested in starting a YouTube channel is you got to put out quality content, you try to put out original content. And most importantly, you got to be consistent um, yep. with that because honestly it took me probably three, maybe three and a half years to reach a thousand subscribers. And then really within the past couple of years, I've gotten 3000 more. So, yep. and the only thing I really did different was just uploaded on a more consistent basis. And yeah, yeah. So that, that's, that's the, the advice I could give um, yeah. as far as a secret. I don't think there's, there's a secret, but yeah. Yeah. And how long do you think will YouTube allow knife related content on their platform? Well, well that's a tricky one. You know, I mean, the, the gun channels have, have already felt the wrath of, of YouTube, if you will. Um, you know, I, I really don't know. I don't know if they're going to uh, try to censor the, the knife community. I know they've already started um, on Instagram and, and other social media platforms. Uh, I, I just, I really don't think about it too much. You know, if they do, I'm, I'm sure there'll be another platform that knife reviewers like myself can, can post to. For the meantime, I mean, it seems to be pretty okay. I don't really do a lot of tactical knives or dangerous weapons i mean i talk about old gr grandpa knives and yeah I don't, I don't really think youtube has any problem uh with me talking about how beautiful you know handle scales are <laughs> i mean yeah yeah but um it, it's a possibility i mean i i try i don't like to think about it i don't really know what will happen um if they do start cracking down but it it's a real possibility and uh, yeah. I, I guess we just have to wait and see how it's all going to play out that reminds me, you are uh, mainly focused on traditionals and Swiss Army knives, that kind of stuff. Uh, is this, has this also something to do with the German legislation, the, 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 the increasing regulations in Germany? Um, I, I really can't say that. I mean, I have to say I do appreciate the slip joints because they're legal and I don't have to worry about being controlled by a police officer. Yeah. Um, but I can honestly say I've lived here for 10 years and I've never been controlled by a police officer. So it's not really something that's on my mind a lot. I mean, I, I probably shouldn't say this on camera, but I mean, I, I carry whatever I want. Um, and I don't really worry too much. I mean, if I get controlled, of course, you know, I'll have to deal with the consequences, which if I carry a one handed one hand opening knife, like a, a titanium flipper or something, I mean, I can get fined 10,000 euro yeah. uh, for, for carrying. I mean, it's a pretty steep penalty, but I don't think the German police are really concerned about people like me. You know, I, yeah. I mind my business. I don't break the law. And yeah, if for some reason a cop were to search me and I had an illegal knife on it, you know, that's on me. That's, that's on me. And I would have to deal with the, the consequences. But as far as the slip uh, joints go, I do find it interesting because a lot of companies really have some creative designs strictly based on the German knife laws and other countries. Yeah. Um, ar around Europe. So that's really exciting for me is seeing the innovation that, that companies are coming out of, you know, making a really ergonomic modern yep. flipper that's non-locking, uh, for example. Yep. Uh, for me, that's really exciting. Um, but yeah, I don't necessarily collect slip joints just because of the German le legislation. No, okay, okay. Well, I noticed the trend also that uh, knife makers are, um, are focusing more on slip joints because of the German uh, legislation. Yeah. So Dutch knife makers, for example, 
now are making more hip joints and then especially the Grand Forcé uh, system mm -hmm. uh, because of the German market. Germany, of course, has a rich traditional history of knife making with soling and, and so on. Yeah. And carrying and using knives uh, because a lot of hunters are living in Germany. And it, it's, a, I think, one of the biggest markets in Northern Europe, Germany. So it's very important for uh, those knife makers. Yeah, and speaking about the tradition, um, it, it's really funny how the German law works because, for example, like a spider coat dr dragonfly, just a tiny little one hand opening yep. locking knife is illegal for me to carry. But I can carry a fixed blade with a blade length up to 10 centimeters. And that's because, I'll show you this knife, these traditional yep. German knives. In the later hosen, they have a special pocket just for these knives. And just yep. because of that heritage, you know, these, these aren't going anywhere. So yep. this is actually legal for me to carry. I mean, yep. I can walk along this, with this on my belt. I, I typically don't. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just crazy. But yeah, yep. it is really interesting to see... You know, I mean, the companies from Solingen, you know, I mean, Ottermesser, Robert Klaas, you know, Carl Schlieper, there, there's tons of, of knife making tradition in, in Germany. So I think it's going to be really hard. It, I'm sure you've heard about the new knife legislation they're, they're trying to pass. Yeah. And I, I think it's going to be really hard because it is so rooted in the in the German culture. Okay, uh, on your channel, uh, Joe, uh, the view, the, 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 your followers can expect a wide variety of topics such as reviews, collection updates, uh, and so on. What are your plans for the future with your channel? What, what can the viewer expect from you? Well, of course, I'm going to keep up the work with the traditional knives. One of the reasons why I started making a lot of videos on traditional knives is because I started collecting these and I was looking for information and they're is really not that much information out there on slip joints. There's a lot of false information, and I'm not saying that all of my information is correct that I say, I'm sure I make mistakes, but I do thoroughly research um, you know, the parts of the knife, what, what things are supposed to be called, uh, how they work. Um, and for other collectors that wanna get into slip joints, I have this crash course series where I basically walk through the anatomy of a slip joint. I say, you know, this is a bolster, this is a cover, this is, the blade tang just yep. because that kind of information is is really scarce there there are uh, a lot of well i wouldn't say a lot but there are a few um that make really good videos i personally really liked watching this guy's name's randy johnson he doesn't really make a lot of videos anymore but just hearing him talk about slip joints and how much he appreciated them and you know i'll be looking at my slip joint and i just felt the exact same way it really motivated me to turn the camera on and make these slip joint videos so i'm going to continue doing that. A lot of people have asked me, you know, to make uh, more videos on modern folders and I'd like to do more of those. At the moment, it's kind of hard to get the clones from China. And, you know, of course, every time I do a Clone Wars, I have to buy the clone plus buy the original or find someone that has the original. And there's a lot that goes on with, with those videos, but there'll definitely be more clone comparisons. There'll be lots of traditional knife reviews and of course, some modern folders as well. So you have a crash course. If you send me the link, I will uh, post it in the description. In recent years, you have already published a lot of content uh, on your channel. And of all the published content, what is your top three? Well, that's a good question. I've done a lot of videos. Um, one of my top three would have to be my first clone comparison. It was a Spyderco Endura that I had the real one and I bought the fake one from China and I just turned the camera on and showed the difference. And this is a time when I probably had like 50 subscribers and you know, I mean, I was getting 10, 20 views per video and I made that video without really thinking anything of it, but I think I got like 3000 views the first day. And I think it's at around 80,000 views uh, today and people still comment on it. People still write me and say, thank you so much. You saved me from getting a, a fake. Um, so that was like, a really big motivator for my my channel okay really enjoyed making that video and I've, I've enjoyed making the the other ones uh as well as far as two other ones um the crash course series i really enjoyed researching it and i really yeah. enjoyed uh, talking about slip joints that would have to be up there and i i guess i'll just throw in a, a funny one i made a video on this little swiss army knife gizmo it's it's a fire a ferrocerium rod that fits in the toothpick slot of a okay. swiss 
And I just thought, yeah, I'm just going to go out and make a video of me starting a, a fire. But I live in downtown Munich and there are just people everywhere. And I literally spent the whole day just trying to find a place where I could start just a little teeny tiny fire. And I was in the woods somewhere and I had the camera set up. I had everything set up. And then like a family comes and all the kids start playing next to me. And I was like, ah. So I ended up doing it in a parking lot somewhere and I lit the fire and put it out pretty much as soon as it, as it got lit. Yeah, yeah. But that one sticks out as that was a really uh, frustrating video to make at the time. But looking back, it, it, was, it was quite funny. So Joe, what can people do to keep up to date with your content and how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, well, they can find me on my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash MesserHQ. Um, I also have an Instagram page at Messer HQ. That's pretty much the only two social media yeah. I use. I'm not, I have a Facebook page, but I never go on it. I never update it or anything. So yeah, YouTube or Instagram at Messer yeah. HQ. Yeah, we will include the links. And finally, is there any news that we have not discussed, but you want to share with us and the viewers? Yeah, you know, nothing really uh, groundbreaking. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Uh, I keep on telling myself I'm going to you know, upload two videos a week or upload every single day. But, you know, I work full time and I, I have a yep. wife and, you know, I, I just have really limited time. And some people I think are just naturals that they can just turn a camera on and 10 minutes later have a video. I mean, sometimes when I make a 10 minute video, it takes me three hours. And yep. I mean, right now I'm just doing once a week. Um, I might try to start doing two times a week if I can really get motivated. But pretty much I'm just going to keep on trekking on. Just, just like I've been doing. So Joe, that was not my final question because I have one more question to ask to you. Uh, besides your favorite own content on YouTube, what is your favorite knife of all time? Yeah, you know, I don't really even have to think about this too hard. I would have to say my favorite pattern, my favorite knife would be the Fremont Jack from Northwoods Knives. Um, it's an extremely rare knife. It's really hard to get. I have one, it's kind of like a base model. It's not really anything special, but I absolutely love that knife. I, I bring it with me everywhere. And I just actually got this one in the mail today. I've been waiting on this one for, I don't know, six weeks in the mail. Okay. And this is a Fremont Jack. And this is in nice. giraffe bone. And this is just super rare, super limited. Yeah. I, I spent way too much money on it, but you know, it's here, it's yeah. mine. Yeah. And it's yeah. going to be with me forever. Yeah. So nice. I absolutely love the Fremont Jack. Um, you know, as far as traditional knives, pretty much anything Grady Stern Cutlery puts out, I mean, they just really hit the yep. mark. Yep. Um, as far as modern folders, I've really been liking uh, what Jesper Voxnes has been doing recently. And I have a giant Ace mouse. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just love the lines. I love the design. Um, so, yeah, they're a couple of my favorite knives. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Joe, thank you very much for giving the viewer an, uh, an overview of your uh, YouTube channel and your knife collecting hobby. Thank you very much. And we hope uh, we can uh, meet again in the future. We hope that the COVID-19 pandemic will stop and that we next year we have our knife shows again in Germany and in the Netherlands and in all over the world. So we can meet again. Yeah, thank you for, for having me. It was a lot of fun. I always love sitting down and just, just talking knives. Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely look forward uh, to the coronavirus being all said and done. Hopefully uh, I see you guys all up in the Netherlands next year.